Katie. Brilliant. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so we've heard a bit about the benefits. Um, so I'm just going to talk through a few examples of farmers that are trying to overcome some of those challenges um, with intercropping. Um, so we've covered this a little bit, really, but um, in terms of potential benefits for intercropping pulses, we're looking at scaffolding, improving harvestability, weed control, basically filling that niche that the weeds would otherwise fill, um, and pest and disease dilution, and then for its companion, usually a cereal, although not exclusively, um, we're looking at the potential to increase protein, possibly the nitrogen in that plant, and again, pest and disease dilution. Um, so, um, one, the first example is uh, organic farm in Shropshire. Um, so this formed part of the Innovative Farmers Field Lab, um, where we've got um, over 20 farmers um, sharing their experiences uh, with intercropping. And we've done different trials with them with the Diversified Project and also the Diver Impacts Project. So Mark is growing carlin peas for Hobby Dodds. Um, it's a traditional black badger pea, which has a lot of biomass um, and can easily end up on the floor, basically. So he was looking for something to hold it up um, and so triticale being quite strong strawed um, and also could potentially be used on, field, uh, on farm for feed or it can be used on farm for feed. Um, so he looked at five different treatments, one with a monoculture of the carlin peas at 250 kilograms per hectare and then an additive design um, putting in 5% of recommended density of triticale 10, 20 and 30. Um, so this was last year um, and he drilled that in two passes. Um, it was a particularly, no, sorry, 2018, 2009, 2018 harvest. Um, he basically it was quite a low lodging year, so he didn't, there was no really noticeable difference in the lodging, but he did notice the 30% um, had much better harvestability. Um, so he repeated again last year um, with a, um, with a 20% and 40% recommended density of the triticale. Um, which he then thinks went too high. So there was a bit of competition there um, and there were lower yields this year. Um, so possibly looking at something in between. The other issue he's had, as we've talked a bit about earlier, um, is his identified foot rot on the farm, or in those fields. So there's a question there around increasing legumes in the rotation and it, uh, is that causing some kind of disease bridging? So I think that's something we might want to pick up on later as well. Um, another example, another organic farm in Wiltshire um, had quite severe wild oat problems um, in certain fields. Um, so was looking at wheat and beans with the wheat looking to fill basically that niche of the wild oats to see if it could outcompete it. Um, so he established in strips um, with bean, a monoculture of beans at 125 kilograms per hectare. Um, and then adding on top um, wheat. So it's quite a low, a low bean rate there. Um, and he was looking to harvest that together um, and use it as a mixed feed for livestock. Um, oh yeah, one point I did forget to mention with Marks is that he, he did separate that on farm um, and then was able to use the Triscalian split peas on farm. Um, so the results for this, we saw really um, quite dramatic impact, both visually, so at the bottom you can see the wild oats were physically smaller, um, that was just observational, but in terms of dry mass we did weed biomass cuts, um, and we saw 74% less um, dry biomass of the weeds in the intercrop versus the monocrop, um, and then again this year we saw similar results of 73% when he repeated um, at a higher um, seed rate of beans this year. Um, also this year he's done some analysis looking at wheat protein. Um, again, this was just on a few samples, so it, it's not necessarily representative of the whole field. Um, but there was a difference there with the intercrop having slightly higher protein and also a higher Hagberg falling number um, for the milling quality. Um, and then finally, um, as part of the Diver Impacts project with, that working with Hobmadods, um, we took a network of the Hobmadods farmers over to Sweden to a similar network of farmers growing for a Swedish um, company. Um, and there we saw quite a lot of growing with oats, um, intercropping with oats, um, which we're doing less of in the UK at the moment, mainly because of issues around separation. Um, so this was an on-farm example that was um, replicated at uh, SLU. Um, and they're basically, again, looking at oats for scaffolding in the lentils. 
Uh, so he'd put in 90 kilograms per hectare of lentils with 40 kilograms per hectare of oats um, and then compared with monocultures. Um, and this has been repeated over multiple years at SLU um, and they've seen um, improved harvestability of the lentils, reduced weed biomass um, and then um, the same slightly increased lentil yield versus the monoculture. So this year it was 1.5 tonnes per hectare on this farm, Pearmodig's farm. Um, but they did see a slight increase in the lentil moisture, but the, the farmer felt that was a, a fair trade-off. Um, and yeah, you can see the, the separation equipment there. So he'd got five stages of separation going on there, but he was able to justify that as it was a hub for local farmers within that network. Um, so this gravity separator was particularly useful for separating the oats and the peas. Um, so just here is kind of an, an overview of various other plant teams that were in the field last year. Um, I won't go through them all now, but do feel free to come and talk to me afterwards um, if you're interested in any of those. Um, and then Andy Howard, who you might be familiar with, is, is looking to trial peas and oats and lentils and oats next year. So looking at some of those things we saw in Sweden. Um, so just in summary, there's no silver bullets. You've got to find what works for you on your farm. Um, there's, there is large variation in yields year on year, but that's also a, a, a thing with pulses, uh, but also with, within the intercrop. Um, important to find your key objectives, think about your priority crop. And there are some challenges that, that we've touched on there, and, and in particular things around the rotation effects are things that we're learning. The, this is all happening in farmers' fields and uh, in research as well, so we're, we're all learning. Um, and so speak to others who are doing it. Do get involved. We've got the Infinity Farmers Field Lab, so you can chat with me or the guys at the back if you're interested to get involved. Thank you.